We heard Eddie Howe talking about uh, Callum Wilson and fairly pessimistic tone, uh, I would say. What news do you have regards a potential replacement for him, Alex? Yeah, I have to say, Jim, I feared the worst when Callum Wilson went down injured in that Manchester United game. He's a boy who's had wretched luck with injuries over the course of his career. A terrific striker, in my opinion, when fit, but just can't seem to stay fit for a prolonged period of time. Uh, one player who wasn't necessarily high on Newcastle's wanted list before that injury to Callum Wilson, but might well be now, is Eddie Nketiah, someone that Martin Keown will know well at Arsenal. He's a player that Howe has been an admirer of in the past and who seemingly is readily available. He too will be a free agent in the summer. No intention from his camp to sign a new deal at Arsenal. Uh, Newcastle who are also, I understand it, keeping tabs on Anthony Martial, is he the right character? Maybe we'll touch on that next week. They face competition <laughs> oh, wow. from Bayer Leverkusen and Crystal Palace potentially as well for Eddie and Ketia. Uh, is he the type of player, Martin, from what you've seen at Arsenal that can score goals to help this Newcastle team stay up in the Premier League? I think I'd go with Origi. But I'd take them both, if in fairness, but I don't think Nketiah yet is quite ready for that that experience to carry that front line. To It's sort of very much a lone striker. And, and Callum Wilson, he does that exceptionally well. Of course, he's injured now. I'm not sure if there's been a latest on that. It looked like it was a really bad sort of calf injury, so lower leg injury. But Nketiah, I, I like the look of what he's doing at Arsenal, but they're not playing him in a front line. I don't see them letting him go anyway. Aubameyang's not in the building right now, so they themselves will want to keep him. So yeah. I can't see that, they, that there's any journey to be had for Newcastle uh, going down that road Alex Patrick Vieira apparently reportedly this morning has been pretty coy in any possible incoming saying that Aaron Ramsey and Eddie Nketiah sure they're good players so maybe you know, look at Nketiah and think of Palace possibly yeah possibly uh, Patrick Vieira will know all about him obviously uh, from his former club Aaron Ramsey's an interesting one we spoke about him and an interest in Newcastle yesterday I, I did chase up a potential line regarding him and Crystal Palace a couple of days ago and they were pretty click, uh, quick I should say my sources there to distance themselves from a move for Aaron Ramsey so that looks unlikely but listen it's only January the 7th isn't it things can change yeah indeed indeed and they will they will Aaron they Ramsey they, they always do I'm a big admirer Jim of, of Aaron Ramsey if he's fully fit but that's the issue isn't it you're paying huge amounts of money if Newcastle were to bring him in they definitely would improve their performances but he's not been fit sure. for Juventus sure two well, games uh, Coutinho going into Villa is it going to lead to outgoings at Villa do you think Alex uh, potentially, uh, but it's incomings that I was uh, hearing about last night when I was chasing up news on Coutinho. I'm told they want a centre-back. Uh, Liverpool potentially willing to listen to offers for Nat Phillips. So again, with the Steven Gerrard connection, there's a link there. And they want a left-back as well. And I'm told they're one of a growing number of clubs tracking Everton's Luca Dean, who we seem to have spoken about every day uh, this week. At the moment, his preference appears to be London. But just maybe the arrival of a stellar name like Coutinho might convince Luca Dean that maybe Aston Villa is an attractive proposition. Seems like every club is having a, a think about Lucas Dean. Are they not, Martin? I know, and he's got quality. Does he do it for and, you? And why is it that he can't play at Aston Villa? Benitez is really sort of laying the law down there, isn't he? So uh, you go or I go. I mean, does the player sit around a little bit longer if Benitez, you know, continues to lose games? Is, is, is he in a perilous position himself? Yeah. Um, it's a shame they can't find a solution and Luca Dean can't stay at Everton because I sure. do think he's an outstanding player. Alex, in a sentence, what do we know about Danny Rose? Surplus requirements at Watford, where now? Yeah, the whispers coming out of there are that he won't even be included in their 25-man Premier League squad if he stays at the end uh, of this transfer window. I know there was interest in Turkey uh, last year, Trabs on Spore. Maybe that could uh, be reignited in this window. Clearly, Claudio Ranieri not impressed with Rose's fitness levels. He's not part of Watford's plans. But just quickly, uh, I talk about Maurizio Pochettino a lot and my admiration for him. Exhibit A, Danny Rose. Look where he was before Pochettino came to Tottenham. Look what he achieved under Pochettino and look how quickly his career has gone downhill since he parted company with Pochettino. Yeah. And Simon Jordan shaking his head. Oh, what a load Why? of rubbish. Why? What a load of rubbish. There's nothing to do with this. The player's choices. The player was kicking up rough when Pochettino was there about player salaries and what he thought he was entitled to. That's just nonsense. Alex, you want to come back at the great man on that one? Pochettino is a coach who is best served on the training ground. He improves players. He definitely improved Danny Rose. And Danny Rose has not been the same player since he stopped playing for him. No further questions, Judge Jordan. <laughs> <laughs> well said. He's well, got, he has, pie, he has got a point there, isn't he? Because he hasn't really played that well, has he, Danny Rose, since he's been away from Pochettino. I know he wasn't really happy. You could make that argument about a lot of players, or you could just look at the players themselves and say, OK, these were moments in time. He Tottenham, has fallen Tottenham well below Danny Rose. a variety of players that were doing certain things. You're never going to let a player off with anything, are you? 
I'm, not Danny Rose, because Danny Rose, like, to me, is a problem. And he's been a problem everywhere he's gone. So with that in mind, I'm not surprised that Watford are cutting him. I'm not surprised that they're cutting him. So with that, you know, with that in mind, I, I think take Danny I, would dispute that. I take that. Well, you can dispute what he wants. He's an opinion. Everyone's entitled to it. Alex has got a point that, that these players did advance, and that Pochettino did bring them on. But that's also their innate ability that was there in the first I'm place. I'm hoping Danny Rose finds a new club and he actually finds his best form again because obviously he's lost his form. It looked to me a completely out of shape and not nowhere near the prey he was once before. Yeah. He's got to get back to he's his He's had two back. chances. He put out to Newcastle last year, wasn't he? Yeah. yeah. Uh, and, and it's down to Danny. I mean, Sammy to an extent is right. It's down to Danny. Of course, it's always down to the individual. But yeah. you need, a, you know, you players do work well, don't they? As Alex yeah. said, with certain managers. Okay. Coming up. Jim White. And Simon Jordan, Monday to Thursday morning, 10 till 1. On AM, on DAB, via the TalkSport app, and on your smart speaker. TalkSport.